seems to be uh, telegraphing a move to run for president again. What do you think? Well, put it this way, I voted for him once, so I'll never do it again. Does that answer your question? Why I never again? He's, uh, well, I think that I think he's overused himself. I think he's used up. I think the uh, January 6 hearings uh, are, are terribly irritating to him. I always say to him, you know, stop the squeal. That's, uh, it's not very unbecoming. It's like someone in a sandbox and they stole their little shovel. And uh, so I don't know where he's going, but I know there are plenty of horses out there from the Democrats who are ready to take him on. DeSantis is one, as you saw in that earlier segment. Holly, Cotton, Good Grief, Cruz. Is a, there's, a, there's a marching order of wait ready to take him on, and I think he's a wounded duck. Do you think that, that they okay, should wait? Do, do you think they should wait? I mean, there's talk that no one's going to make a move until they know for sure what he's going to do. I think that people just should do what they want to do. If we're going to, if the whole American public is held in thrall by Donald J. Trump, we're all in trouble. I mean, this is a this is a nut house. This this <laughs> man is out. Uh, and, and and she's got an opponent here who Liz Cheney is trying to nail it. And she's saying, look, are, are you in favor of saying that Trump that, that the stole the election? And she can't answer that. Because if she says that he stole the election, he's going to throw her overboard just like the pirate ship. You're talking about her battle right now to get the Republican nomination to, to run again yeah. uh, as the congressman from Wyoming. And I know you have put out an ad supporting her, but, you know, if you look at the poll numbers center, she's got an uphill battle on her hands, and this would sort of follow a pattern, not consistently, of those who challenged Trump or criticized him or even voted for impeachment. Um, the, the, it's going to be tough sledding for him. Sure it is, uh, but there's there's a couple of things about the cause. You have one person on the side of revenge and hatred versus another person who says that he is this is the destroyer of democracy. Take your choice. <laughs> now, That's awesome. you said you voted for him when he first ran. So I take it that you didn't vote for him in 2020? My heart was not in it. Uh, and uh, I, said, I said, you didn't know which one I was going to say, but I voted for him once, but I'd never vote for him again, ever. So is, is it based on you know, just his behavior? How would you describe it? <laughs> well, it's, uh, to me, it's, it's, it's con he's, he's a contortionist. Oh. He, he would, he could, as a circus act, he'd be a contortionist. How the hell do you lose an election by eight million votes, <laughs> prattle on into the vapors that, that you that you lost and that it was stop the steal, then organize everybody as they're proving in the in the January 6th commission that this guy was right in the middle of it. Tried to get back to the Capitol. They wouldn't let him go there, take him back. Anyway, uh, it's 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 it is an ego driven almost like a madman. I want this job and I don't care what it takes. And, uh, and, and calling elected officials, can you find me 11,000 votes? Calling even witnesses that are testifying before the January 6th? I mean, the guy is, the word is unhinged, but uh, the locks are off, off and, uh, and the door is wide open. So what would happen, him. Senator, if, given your views, um, and he does run for president, and he does win, and he comes back to the White House, what do you think would happen? Well, I think that then at that point, I'd do what I did with every president I've served. I served with Carter and Bush and Reagan and Clinton, and I wasn't there with Obama. But I think I would say I respect the office. I don't respect the person. I respect the office of presidency. It's a terrific and answer. If I were back uh, in the fort, uh, throwing bombs from the top of the roof, I would I would do 
uh, I would give the respect to the president as an office of the but land. But you don't like him as a person. Are, are, are you afraid of something? Or are you afraid he does something if he gets in there? I, I don't understand. Well, Camuto I'm afraid, does I'm understand. I'm appalled. <laughs> He'd do anything, anything to advance his cause or wake up in the morning and like the queen and in Bambi and say, who's the fairest person in the land? It's me, Donald Do you think, Trump. I know you, you've supported Cheney and, and her, you know, this commission's work. Do you think any of the revelations you've heard, Senator, um, are, are criminal and that, that if they referred and asked the Justice Department to file such charge, you would agree that he has committed crimes? I, I, I don't know that. I do know this, that uh, anything that comes out of this administration uh, that has to do with Trump or putting him in the clink or putting the heat on him, <laughs> it will backfire by its own uh, uh, volition. Agreed. And they'll say they're just picking on him. They're just picking on old poor old Donald, or the, the child imposter. Um, Senator, uh, a lot has been made, uh, you know, Donald, uh, you know, Trump in uh, 74, 75, you know, uh, President Biden is going to be 80 this year. Uh, Elon Musk is suggesting there should be an age limit on the presidency. Do you think there should be? Well, I think, no. I've, I've seen a lot of people, if we're thinking of Henry Kissinger versus Elon Musk, Henry must be about 100, I uh, don't think. 99 years young, 99 years young, yeah. You can't, you can't put, I know 80-year-old people that are smarter than 30-year-old people. <laughs> Absolutely. And, so you shouldn't make you age, you, in other words, you don't think you should make age an issue? No. No, I do not. And, and, and then when they talk about, uh, you know, term limits, fine, if, but if you don't do something with the civil servants, it doesn't matter. How many terms they do? The other team guy says, I'm a GA at 17, and I'll be here forever. So bring him up and have a hearing, and, and I'll be, I'll be but, here. But in other words, don't make after. age an issue, which makes me think that maybe you, 90 years young, are indeed contemplating a run for president. I, no. I think of it every day, and I have my little <laughs> tied, tied to my pajamas, and I know I could win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that that's like a maybe. Anyway, that's a maybe right now. What, I, I, I did want to know while I still have you as well. What do you think of the tone in Washington these days? I guess it's not that dramatically uh, different than when you left. You were hoping to find a bipartisan cause, you know, uh, to deal with the debt. We never did, never have, probably never will at the rate we're going. We don't have a lot of time, about 30 seconds or so, Senator. But what do you think of what's going on now in the place you called home there for a long, long time? Well, I think about um, in 83, I wasn't good before, before I got there, when Moynihan and Dole and all of them got together and did something with the Social Security system. I get nailed on that all the time. I said, all I can tell you is in 2034, you're going to pay out 23% less. And if you can't get through that, you're gored, you're made out of soap suds. Hmm. You can't do anything because the AARP will tear you to bits and the seniors and the, you know, Grab a grab a lunch. Still, still a mess. Lunch. Still a mess, yeah. Senator. To your point, very good catching up with you. Congratulations again, Senator. The Medal of Freedom well, recipient. Thank you, and you heal. You take care. I will, my friend. Thank you. Be well. Very much. Oh, you are love, Alan Simpson. In this country, uh, speaks his mind.